I am not going to say hello at the beginning of this episode because we do that all the time. So instead, I'm just going to say whatever it is I just said, and we're going to move on with the Colin show. And I'm not going to follow anything coherently based on what Ray said and talk about those mushroom jellyfish he got behind him. And I actually haven't noticed how different the right and the left one look like the way I'm seeing it right now. The left one, darker one, looks like a mushroom. The right one, honestly, I think I just my brain has gone back and forth between jellyfish and mushroom with that thing. So I've always wanted to comment on that background. And with that comment, enjoy this second call-in episode. Well, here we are for the second call-in show. And by call-in, I mean Q-A-L-L. Uh, this is a Q&A slash call-in show. So we're going to be answering some questions if we get some questions from the audience. Uh, other than that, we're going to be shooting the breeze, talking about yesterday's incredible marathon episode. Uh, and then we'll invite some people to be on the show with us, which is always a lot of fun. Uh, we were having a conversation, though previous to this on dualistic unity social and uh we were just talking about the recognition of duality and and the role of the observer let's just say because that's really what it is is you start to recognize how much influence we have and, and what the nature of duality is that everything is very much like a teeter-totter you know the more you lean one way the more you necessitate the other way um and when you get that and you start to see it, well, everything starts to make a lot more sense, but it makes sense in like different scales. It's you start to see it in like how how things influence other things, like how one thing on a different scale becomes something else entirely. You know, like a personal squabble on a larger scale becomes a war. Right. And both of those things are the same problem but exacerbated through how many other different points of influence, through how many other people participating in that mentality that the personal squabble was based upon. And it get, eventually gets to a point where everybody's so focused on security, so focused on, on feeling good about themselves versus the people that they're in conflict with, that they create a fucking country or they create a, a, a fort with walls around it and an army. And this is where all this stuff comes from, as above, so below. Like it's all just the same shit played out on different scales. And so that's what hit me when I kind of woke up was that there's always the me underneath all of this. And the me is just fine and, and acts with empathy and, and, and in peace when it doesn't feel like it needs something because it feels like it lacks something. And so it doesn't necessarily need to feel like it has more control or that it's more important or any of that. And as soon as that mentality comes in, the cascade that goes throughout time afterwards because that mentality convinces another person of that mentality and that convinces another person of that mentality. And before you know it, 10,000 years of empire building and bloodshed. You know, and that's what it is. It's just that we don't look at it that way. We, we look at it, it's like, oh, you know, I'm just fearing judgment. It's like, no, you're actually reflecting, you know, a very sizable part of a collective mentality that's been poisoning us forever. You know, and that and that's it. And when you recognize it, you realize there's nothing you can do about it. Because to go out there and try and do something about it is to actually give into it. To go out there and to try and teach being is to give up being yourself. So whatever it is you're teaching is actually some distorted version. And so you're looking at this and you're like, well, what do I do? Oh, right. Be myself. And you're like, but what about the world? What world are you thinking about? You know, and, and it just comes back down to this recognition over and over and over and over again. And most people just, just walk away from it because it sounds super frustrating and not satisfying at all. But the alternative is the continuation of this fucking nightmare, this fiction of myself that is governing the entirety of our fucking society. You know, to just abandon it in yourself makes ripples. You don't have to see them. But I can tell you from my own life, sacrificing all that need for self-importance and control will bring you more of what you need than you ever thought because you were focused on what you wanted and what you thought you needed. It's incredible, but is it worth it to you? That's really the question. Is it worth it to you to continue to just sacrifice your need to think about yourself? Do you remember what it's like to be 
lost in that feeling of the idea of yourself not being enough, buried by it all to the point where everything seems like darkness and fear. Because if you remember that point, you'll remember it's absolutely fucking worth letting go of. And nobody will ever have to tell you that because you'll know. And that's because it's up to you to decide. It's just easy to forget the hell when you're paying attention to something else that distracts you from it. And that's the problem, right? Is that we get so distracted that we don't actually get a good fucking look and how much we're hurting ourselves. And until we recognize how much we're hurting ourselves, we really don't have any reason to stop. Oh, yes. And yeah. <laughs> and I've referred to it before, but that experience, that straight up, that experience of that pit, that darkness, that fear, that shame. It's like something we're able to, we're not able to bury it, but we're able to convince ourselves that it's not there anymore. We're able to distract ourselves even from our own actions to the point that we believe that it isn't. And it's all just self-absorbed, trying to feel better. Just think about myself better. The whole self-esteem thing <laughs> you're talking about on the live stream is just a way. And so it's interesting to see those sort of swells of things, you know, self-esteem example, just you know, think positively about yourself in this realm of thought being taken as truth. It's like, well, if thought is the truth, then self-esteem is one of the last, you know, last walls before it's like, well, maybe this isn't the case thinking about yourself really positively and so that was like you know you said before i don't remember the 90s a whole lot necessarily but it kind of swelled then and then into the 2000s kind of carried over but we're seeing more and more of the the issues with it the things that the all the sides of it that don't actually work how much it fucks with the world how much it fucks with everything because even the thought of saving the world puts you at odds with the world. You have to think about yourself as above the rest of the world <laughs> to think that you're the one who's going to save it. Perpetuating the thing that needs saving. So unless you're willing to recognize that you are the world, that it's not a above you the rest of the world isn't above you and it's not below you it is you it's a reflection of you a direct reflection of you until then like, uh you're gonna be perpetuating the same fucking shit that's causing watering the same fucking tree looking at the same fucking thing just feeling better about a certain leaf on the tree instead of looking at the root of it recognizing where it comes from and taking a good look at that and how because you know, when when you talk about certain things like everyone wants to look at the say it is like a tree you know identity the world whatever and mm -hmm. and there's common roots but all the things that we see that sort of more superficial stuff are just leaves and everyone wants to look at the leaves because looking at the root contradicts everything that you use to feel better about yourself, like the judgment thing you brought up before. People don't want to give up their ability to judge even. If they were given the option, you will never be afraid or concerned about judgment again, but you'll never be able to judge ever again. And people didn't want to give that up. That's insane. Fucking insane. You can be free of the fear of being judged if you're just willing to give up your need to judge and you don't want to do it like holy fuck that's a crazy it sounds way to live, but like it sounds insane but it also looks insane when a drowning person pulls somebody down with them it's not insanity it's fear it's fear all it is 
I don't know how else to feel good about myself, so I need to judge. You know, if I'm not raising myself up, how can I feel good? And that's exactly how we envision it. Every time we feel good, we're raising ourselves up. But in order for that to happen, everything else, by contrast, must be lowered. And that's what creates our conflict, right? Because who likes to feel lower? <laughs> no one. And so you want to feel better about yourself. So you say something that makes you feel better. But in doing so, you make me feel worse because I take that shit seriously. And so what do I do? I respond by saying something that makes me feel better and boosts me up. Now that makes you feel worse. And Generation by generation, and you and I are now at war, or rather our ancestors are, and there's a giant fucking army behind us, and it's just because we can't help but feel like, you know, uh, well, no, I was right. No, I'm better. You know, I'm I'm the fucking master race, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's really what it is. Like, it's just, it's this need for, for well, it, supremacy, right? It's this need to feel like you you are right, on the right path, believing the right belief, the right race, the right country, the right fucking, all of it. It's just whatever it can be. You'll choose anything. You know, I I, I dress the right way. Like, it's like, what? You what? What did you just say? Like, it's just, it's such a fucking ridiculous thing. But we actually think these things. You know, this is something that actually dogs a lot of our fucking morning hours. Like, we get up and we're like, what am I going to wear? What's going to happen today? Who am I going to run into? Oh, God. What if I run into this person down at that point? And like, they're going to judge me. For this. Like, it's like. Why are you doing that? You know, other than the fact that you're invested in the idea of yourself that you must maintain. So you need to feel good about that idea before you go out into the world, because you know going out into the world is going to be in conflict with the idea. And so what you try to do is you try to think about all the considerations that you're going to deal with that day so you can control them. So that way the idea remains protected, safe, secure, and giving, keeping you feeling valuable. And so the entirety of your pre-day fucking workout in your head is getting ready for the shit that you know you're going to have to deal with because of that idea. You just haven't tied it to that idea. You think it's the shit that you have to go through because you're protecting yourself. You want to feel better. You're trying to be more. You're trying to improve yourself. Blah, 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 blah. But all of that revolves around a fictional goddamn idea. All of it. And if you didn't believe in that idea actually being truth, you would not think it actually gives you value. Because think about it. Just please take it in. If you are to believe anything about yourself, that thing is always going to be in danger of contradiction. Always. This is why we're afraid of being wrong. This is why we're afraid of failure. This is why we're afraid of doubt. Because we can't just look at those things and learn from them. No, they mean something about us. Why? But because of this idea. You know, if this idea is invalidated, if the idea is suddenly a failure... What's the point of the fucking idea? It's not making me feel better at all. And that's the question. What's the point of the fucking idea? If it's not making you feel better at all. Because it's not. It may in the short term, but it fades. And then it's immediately under, under attack again. And what do you do? You repeat the loop. You just do it faster, stronger, twice as hard. Right? You're just like, I'm just going to double down on that shit. It's going to work out this time. And it never does until finally, you know, you don't know how to feel anything except the need to get somewhere else and the fear of not getting somewhere. That's all you fucking feel. That's your entire life. Because without that, what are you? And it never dawns on you to just stop and be yourself. And in being yourself, it's like you suddenly become aware of how massive you really are. Of how much potential you really have. But you can't see it as long as you're trying to find it. You know, it's kind of like walking around with your glasses on your on your head. You know, where's my glasses? Where's my glasses? Where's my glasses? And as long as you're looking, you never go. Oh, <laughs> right. Because you're too busy with the determined idea that it's somewhere else. And that's the point. As long as you're looking for your value somewhere else, as long as you're looking for your purpose, as long as you're looking for your place in the universe somewhere else, you're missing what it is right now. Because it is right now. And it's not anything you're ever going to form an idea about. Not one that's ever going to come close to the reality. It's only ever going to tear it down. Abandon that shit. Abandon it. Live in what remains. And before you know it, you'll see the reason it's it's so different. It will start to become evident to you. Because I could describe what my life is like when I'm not thinking about myself. That's not I can do a fucking thing for you. Not at all. All you're going to try and do is try and be like that. 
that's the funniest part about it is that if I try and give you some description of what I experience life like right now, you're going to look for that shit in your day to day life. And that's going to take away from the reality. That's the point. That's just it. Nobody can tell you. Nobody knows because it's up to you because it's just you. And it, I mean that it's just you, not that it's just you as in you're the all of everything, but it's just you as if as in you're already it. You're already it. There's nowhere to go. There's nothing to be. Just sink into it. Get used to it. Have fun with it. You know, because it takes a little while to get used to, but you'll start to recognize there's way more fluidity and movement. There's way more ability, adaptability. The list goes on and on. It's all the things that we want that we can never get to so long as we're trying to be the person that has access to them. It's what remains. because we're always trying to be that person if you were to tell me how you act when you're feeling free like, because i have control all i gotta do is what ray does and then i'll be free too right it's like we go in the it's like a it's like an expression only it's a one-way street like it only stems from you being yourself and then there's certain actions that are taken but no one can actually copy those actions in order to do it because then it's taking the actions and trying to shoving it back in it's like trying to put the toothpaste back in the tube instead of the toothpaste being an expression of someone being themselves and then you're looking at this like splooge of raised toothpaste all over the counter you're like all right that's how so then i just have to then i just gotta do that and that's how i uh how i become free and it's like no that was ray's splooge of being himself over there that's all that was that's not your splooge your splooge is going to look totally different when you're actually expressing yourself from there and like the the toothpaste back of the tube splooge and stuff you like, just described all religion and spiritual paths <laughs> straight up dude you're following Fuck. somebody else's splooge of toothpaste <laughs> Uh, oh god oh i want to there that's there oh my god and that's what we'll that's how we do everything like you can't because you can't look anywhere to be yourself you can't look into you can't read anything you can't watch anything you can't listen to anything you can't focus on anything you can't look to anyone else you can't look to society you can't look to the world but every time that you do it's that same thing it's like you are full of fucking toothpaste splooge and you're trying to look at everyone else's expression and then copy that. But it's coming from somewhere. It's coming from a state of just them being themselves. And you can't copy that. You can't as much as like nothing's disconnected. It's like every expression is unique and trying to match that doesn't do shit for you because each moment you're different, too. So you can't even match other times when you were feeling free. And splooging toothpaste of freedom, a freedom splooge. And look at that and be like, well, I was feeling this way last week and I acted this way. And so now I'm just going to keep acting that way. And it's like playing in the splooge instead of expressing it. And it feels way better to splooge than it does to swim in a bunch of splooge because now that splooge is all dry it's former it smells splooge. Yeah. funky <laughs> yeah. old the moldy splooge splooge. is still toothpaste let's keep that in mind <laughs> yeah. it's getting a little gray i'm not gonna lie but it is still toothpaste yeah still minty fresh toothpaste but it starts to get crusty regardless and it, you can't really play in crusty toothpaste so it's always got to be fresh and it's only able to be expressed it can't even be played in the the, the thrill is the expression the thrill is the splooge it's not what comes after see this is what i've been saying is that people meditate because they think that that's going to make them enlightened you know people you know use singing bowls because they think that it's going to make them enlightened you know and they have images of like buddhist monks doing that whole thing and you know and, and this is a problem with it could be anything like you the listener right now could take something that's personal to you in your life it could be anything i don't know a keychain a, a chain that you wear around your neck it could be anything it could be a frisbee 
that you remember playing with as a kid. Who knows? And and, and you could you know, just come up with some routine, not a routine necessarily, but something that you do with that thing that involves you paying a lot of attention to it. You know, like uh, prayer beats, quote unquote, are really just, you know, a string of beats. You understand? Like there's nothing really there. It's just, just a string of fucking beats. And, and the whole trick is that, you know, the person using it holds each and every bead as they go through through them with intention and presence they're not counting how long to hold the bead right each one is its own experience see it's just something you're paying attention to and in that attention you're seeing yourself as opposed to who you think you are and that's the whole point of attention is to see what is as opposed to what you think is and so you could do that with anything you can do that with anything you know you don't have to be sitting in the lotus position you don't need to close your eyes you don't need to use a singing bowl you don't need to hold a crystal you don't need to be burning incense you don't need to think about your chakras you don't need to read about zen buddhism you don't need to read about christianity you don't need to learn you know the verses of the Tao Te Ching. you don't need to learn any of these things any of these things whatsoever none of them none of them point to the truth because you're the truth and so the real trick to this is creating and cultivating your own practice of looking at yourself. Which is not analyzing yourself. It's not looking at the idea of yourself. It's the act of actually just paying attention to what is. Because that's you. And in that, it's, and that's where you build that faith in yourself too, when you're actually paying attention and seeing what happens and responding just in the moment, like not, not based on what you've been told is the right way to respond and actually fucking like, fuck all that shit, fuck all that shit that you've learned about how to act every day. Fuck it. Fuck it to death. Fuck it right to death. All that shit. The right and the wrong. And because you've, you've learned things along the way, whether you realize it or not, you've learned things throughout your life. And that has informed everything that you've done, but there's certain bars that you'll still hold on to about how you should be acting, the right way to act, the right, right way to respond, the scary things that could happen. Like, it's all bullshit. None of it is actually a guiding mechanism. None of it is actually showing you the way because the way is you expressing yourself and actually, and then it, it becomes, there's more of an appreciation, I think, for being yourself when you find that like there's something happening there each and every time you have this desire to look around for how to do something and you don't. And you don't look to someone else. You don't try to be liked. You don't try to be seen in a certain way. And you just genuinely act in the moment how you want to act. There's there's changes that happen right then and there. There is some, and this isn't even like to push like, you know, oh, building yourself. It's not building yourself. It's, it's a practice. But it is something that you can get better at not for anything outside of just a, a, an appreciation of your experience of the fullness of life of the fullness of what you are but it's i'm not saying it's an easy thing either because it is feels risky at first when you first start doing it when you when you stop looking around so much to anyone for how to act or how to live like that's can be feel frightening and yet at the same time, fucking freeing as shit because there isn't anyone to look to. There's nothing to look around to. There's no right path. There is no path. Like any book, any religion, any fucking structure, thing to follow, thing to do, thing to say, thing to express, thing to talk about. There's It's never going to be there. And each and every time you're willing to look at that and be like, there isn't anything to guarantee anything there's no sense of control for any guarantee of any way of anything that's going to happen in a minute from now but i do have myself and my response to whatever's going on 
whatever that way is, even if you think it's like, oh, that was probably the wrong thing to do. It's like, fuck that. Fuck that. Just do it. Just do it and find out and pay attention and learn. And there's something that shifts in you, even when you're like, yeah, this is probably wrong. This is probably the worst way to do it. But whatever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna pay attention. And I'm gonna find out because I don't actually know that. I don't actually know anything about how the response is gonna be. What the response is gonna be to this thing that I assume is something wrong or it's the, the mean thing to do or or not as sensitive of a thing to do but it's what's being expressed like you find your own balance in that but as long as you're looking around it's like you're going to keep feeling like you're there's nothing that you're standing on because the only thing you can actually stand on is yourself is not looking around and there is a there is a grounded sort of feel as you start to do that just a little bit more and there's opportunity to do that Every fucking moment, every day, you know, waking up and just having faith in yourself for a day. Like, this is the day I'm going to not look around anyone and not try to be liked, not try to be viewed a certain way. And I'm just going to do that. And there's going to be shifts in you, but it's not necessarily going to feel good at all. That's for sure. But there's changes that happen in that, you know. There's things that shift in you as you do that. And you start to get a sense and you're like, holy fuck, there's, there's myself here. I can look to myself for things to do. Like there's a whole fucking situation going on here. And I don't have to look to someone else or try to manipulate them into liking whatever this thing I think I am. Cause that's going to be fucking tiring. That's going to be exhausting so fucking exhausting if you keep doing that and i i'm starting to wonder if there's anything that isn't just fucking futile in that experience <laughs> uh, i i like the fact that you know your priorities start to change and, and what i mean is that if it is on you then all of a sudden you come across across a problem that you just frankly don't have the skills to solve. <laughs> you just don't know. And so you do go and you find someone and you get them to help with the problem. But whereas before you would have found somebody and went, all right, thank you. Appreciate that. Let me know when that's done. Now you find somebody and you hover <laughs> and you're like, what are you doing in there? You know, Because this might happen again. And I'd kind of like to know how to not call you. <laughs> <laughs> and so all of a sudden everything starts taking on a different tone you're not learning these things because it's an arduous task you're learning them because you didn't fucking know it before you know you didn't know it before and now you do you know and this is why i always find it funny when i meet younger people especially when you know they're dealing with somebody with something in their house for example i was a superintendent at one point and it never failed to be like a, a leaky faucet or or there'd be a you know um uh the uh the joint underneath the sink was leaking it's like you know just that's easy enough to fix right and then the younger person living there is like oh shit that was really easy it's like yeah you know and once upon a time when your parents would have known how to do this themselves they would have showed you that shit when you were growing up <laughs> and you would have learned how to do that yourself you would learn how to garden right you would have learned how to build things you would have learned all kinds of stuff because at one point the generation before us knew all that stuff and because they had to to survive but again there's that trajectory right of comfort and technology and all of a sudden generation by generation by generation our skill set changes you know our skill set changes we learned how to adapt to the world where we're thinking about ourselves all the time but we're functionally fucking useless <laughs> so that said this is a call-in show. <laughs> uh, so if you would like to join us, you can do so. All you have to do is agree to the fact that this is an episode. It will be released as a podcast episode later on, the Dualistic Unity podcast, if you don't know. And if you don't know, how the fuck did you get here? Glad you're here, but very curious. Anyway, just if you'd like to join us, go to dualisticunity.com slash live, and that will take you to the form. Fill in that form, click the link, or if you'd like, you can call the phone number either way and it will bring you into the waiting room where we will let you in and you can be part of the episode for up to 10 minutes sometimes a little over maybe a little under if you have to go i don't know it's happened um it's a call-in show so if you don't call in right now we can go fucking anywhere and this is a really good episode 
I'm enjoying the shit out of this because, you know, I, I spend a lot of time looking at the world and, and all of that. And I always find it so funny how I didn't get here through trying to get here. I didn't get here through trying to save the world or trying to create a community or trying to, you know, host a fucking mind blowing podcast with another brilliant individual who's going through his own fucking trajectory. Actually, three brilliant individuals who are all going through their own fucking trajectory. I have fucking insightful conversations every day. Dear Lord, could you imagine trying to make this being the forceful kind of motherfucker who's like trying to put all this together? Like it pains me when I have to tell someone in discord that they're missing the point. It, it's not one of those things I like to do. On the other hand, it's one of those things that I do do because if I didn't do it, they just continue to run in circles. Right, which is why I was—I always encourage those in Discord. When you see somebody just going off, when you see them looking for attention, when you see them, you know, just expressing stuff without trying to bring it to something that they're learning from what they're going through, don't just make them feel better. You know, you don't always have to be a shoulder to cry on. Sometimes you can be a swift kick in the ass, and that's far more valuable. Oh yeah, especially when you're. And because I can, I can feel when you're, and that you're just talking to yourself and those who are willing to be self-honest, I think, hear you and hear, period, just hear those are theirs to hear, here. And so, so often, like, and I get the feel sometimes too, just like, because I'll get surprised when I'll post something or share something that I'm straight up just talking about my own experience and like depths of my own experience. I'll be surprised when people resonate even. And they're like, well, oh, yeah, I, I, I'm feeling this. I'm like, what? What the fuck? Seriously? Wait a second. And it's fascinating. That it's still like that surprising to me after all this time but <laughs> it can be it's you want it's, it to be yeah <laughs> that's not that point there <laughs> cuz i've i um oh, cuz the amount of fucking time i feel like i've spent hiding those sides like straight up feeling like I'm vomiting my insides, the deeper parts of me in a lot of ways. And I, I don't know what I'm doing. Admittedly, like, especially in the last couple of weeks on social media, I've had very little idea of, of what I'm doing, but there's a part of me and in, in moments where it's like, I kind of have a sense for it. And like, cause I don't know. Sharing things doesn't always feel great necessarily, but it's only because I've held myself to a bar for so long that I'm like fucking dropping the bar for myself in a lot of ways. And like, cause it's not that there was even a, a bar there that existed. It was just my own. And so it's like, just destroying it <laughs> in a lot yeah. of ways. This is just, just from. I want to remind you, like, you know, like it's not that there was a bar there, just to me. That means there was a bar there. You know, how you perceive the world is your reality in a lot of ways. You know, if you perceive that there's a bar to you, it's real. Yeah. Mm, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> that's the trick right stop punching shadows you're giving them fucking materiality that said we have somebody in the queue yes first call in for the call-in show call in show q a call in show whatever you want to call it this is the first one it's marie which is fucking awesome so we're going to get marie in here to join us this has been a dope conversation so far i'm looking forward to where this goes especially in the patreon call immediately after because We've been really on a roll lately. This is fun. Like I, I'm talking about shit and it's fucking pinging across. And you know, like in a submarine when they ping and there's a really loud, like, <laughs> right? 
that's when you know you've encountered something very much feeling that vibe the last week and a half or so like there's a lot of pinging happening marie good to see you lots of pinging definitely, marie, lots of... <laughs> definitely lots of pinging um yeah i've been resonating so hard i absolutely loved the marathon yesterday like a true telethon i fell asleep to it like <laughs> Like, it was just, uh, it was so dope. And I'm so excited for uh, the community itself. And, like, it's just, like, uh, I appreciate just any opportunity that allows us to recognize the potential we have when we come together. So um, thank you for, you know, facilitating all that. Um, with that being said, I had such a day where, like, participating in the world was so silly like there's there's been moments lately where like um I was real close to like um feeling myself just I, I was sitting in a meeting I was in a professional development type of day all day just I went to a school visit which was helpful for me because I recognize it's, there's other schools out here there's other there's other walks of life here let's not get too wrapped up in you know, what I'm experiencing because it's just, there's elsewhere. And then I was just sitting, I don't know, I was sitting in the meeting that like was later in the day and it just felt like bullshit. I, I don't know. Like I had, I had this overwhelming sense of what I was feeling like what I would uh, usually label as anxiety, but just remembered these conversations, remembered like, okay, <laughs> this is showing up. Um, just breathe. There's no need to label it. There's no need to, you know, um, sometimes I would in the past, like flee, like if I'm feeling like I might throw up or pass out um, or, you know, you can't breathe, like get out. But I was like, no, you know what? I don't know. You're okay. Um, I don't know. Sometimes like participating in like the made up bullshit. Um, I don't know. It, it feels it feels ridiculous. So I try to I try to remind myself that this is just like a useful opportunity for me to like recognize that without it being like bad necessarily like okay this is uh, not bad but like I don't know just like let it inspire me and continue to like push me to remove the bullshit to like to not like whenever it starts to feel so rigid and like you know like you're putting limits and limitation on anything it just starts to like I don't know. I feel like we're missing the point at that point, you know, and like we, we get fixated on um, my, my co-teacher was like, you know, we're, a lot of times the push is the, for the product. We don't we don't we don't care about the process anymore. We don't care about, you know, like what the journey looks like. And we, we want we want these products to come out of it. We want to hold it and go, this is, you know, something that means something instead of recognizing the meaning of things comes through the process, through the learning, through the mess ups, the mistakes, not uh, this carbon, like, you know, cut out uh, cookie cutter type. We, this is what it needs to look like. It could look like whatever. Um, so it was weird because I had like the morning of like going to a school that believed very much that like the kids were just like creating art, doing stuff together, listening to chill music and like, um, and I, there's components of my work that I get to do that, but I know, I don't know anything, <laughs> but, um, I, I'm going to shift by next year. Um, I'll either be in a different classroom, maybe a whole other school, maybe no school at all, but it, I think there's a shift coming. Um, and so I, I don't know, I, it, there's a, all those components and then there's the components of recognizing there's so much more than just all this either. So like, but if I ever feel myself getting too wrapped up in um, the nitty gritty stuff, it's like, let me pause and take a step back. Like, so yeah, it was a lot of that today. So I thought I'd hop on because <laughs> it was just, 
it, it was just that, you know. Oh, I feel that for sure. <laughs> um, it's it's so interesting because what a, what a wonderfully dualistic day. You know, it started off with you're like, this is great. And then it's like, oh, yeah, this stuff. Right. That. And, and what's so interesting is going through that, you were doing exactly what the work is. You were looking at it, learning from it without rising to the reaction to it. Because that's the only way this system fades away, right? Is when we actually stop, look at it, take in how different it is from what we could do, and then actually just do something different. But in order to do that, we have to practice the looking without the reaction, you know, the looking without the judgment, just the recognition of where it comes from, why it's happening and what its consequences are. And we start to change and generation by generation, it shifts. So you were doing the work. You went into the dragon's fucking den. You sat there, looked at the dragon, went, yeah, do your thing. And then you moved on and you came here to share the share the story. And we appreciate it. Ripples have been made. <laughs> Fuck yeah. And you were honest with yourself too, because I feel like a lot of people will go through a day like that and they'll immediately be like, you know, it must be some, th these feelings must be because of something else. It's the way my coworkers acting. It's the, it's the way that the world, oh, it was the bus driver. It was the traffic. It was the blah, 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 blah. And it's all this stuff that's like not actually looking at it yourself. It's, <laughs> it's everyone else's fault. It's everything else. All the other stuff, it's not, couldn't be me, but it, just sitting in it, which isn't a comfortable thing to do at all. That's getting, it's getting those reps. It's kind of like the, uh, that story of the, the two sides of a, or there was like some classroom and they had a pot, it was a pottery class and half the class was told to make one pot just as best as they possibly can. And the other side was told to make a hundred pots, just, just make them. Yeah. And at the end of it, the class that or the side of the class that made the one pot versus the hundredth version from the other side, the hundredth version was like a hundred times better than the one pot. And so we're running around trying to make this one pot and keep it fucking maintained and, and patched up instead of just letting it happen and then finding out what it's going to be and, you know, keep paying attention on the hundredth variation what it's at and the thousandth variation and all that stuff but yeah it's uh just sitting with those just getting those getting those reps in for sure it also makes me think of the pot story of like um our desire to like do the first pot so well instead of recognizing how many times it takes to like you know perfect that craft and work at it and um it, it is all about the process because if you're just trying to like put out a product um right away that proves something that's really all it is it's like this is to make me feel better about myself but it's like you could just enjoy the process enjoy the process of learning fucking up how to make the pot like um adding different designs I, like just go with the process and be part of the learning and the growth and um I think whenever I, uh, I'm thinking of like aligning my life I've been thinking about this a lot just like remembering to um well that's interesting but like feeling like that I know I think uh, Ray brought this up but like wanting to align my life to like reflect how I've been just thinking and trying to approach my life. So when I'm interacting with people at work, I'm interacting from a place of, I'm just going to be here and listen and, and, and listen to respond, listen and seek to understand and not try to like, like, go quickly to judge that means I'm doing it with my students that means I'm trying to incorporate in lessons even like how can we just like talk about this but also be doing fun arts and crafts too um <laughs> and like just like play a bit too and so um when I feel myself getting pulled into a direction that doesn't feel like that's where it's going I end up like like okay here's a time for reflection how can I um take a step back and and see and see where it could where it can be shifted and but I also when I was thinking about that originally it's just like I have to also remember that it's all part of it like there's no right way like you're just aligning yourself so like it's just gonna <laughs> show up however it's gonna show up and then you're just in alignment with it because you're just in alignment with what is which is really 
the practice um, and the experience. So, yeah. It's... Well said. Well said. You know, it very much is like that. Like, I don't know if if you play chess or, or not, but sometimes you can get so caught up on one side of the board because you're afraid that they're going to get that piece yeah. and you totally miss everything else that's happening on the other side of the board, right? So you actually have to sit back and then all of a sudden now it's like you're taking in more information. So your emotional response is different because you don't feel so contained in that tight little box. All of a sudden you're like, oh shit, there's a lot more stuff happening. I better pay attention. And you are suddenly paying attention. And so a different solution happens entirely, but it's just because you stepped back. So we really appreciate you being here, Marie. I appreciate you sharing your adventure with us today. Um, again, it makes me feel better knowing that at least you were in that meeting to balance things <laughs> Uh, I appreciate being here for sure. Um, yeah, so it's always a good time just like being a part of the process with you all and just like uh, there's no product here at all, <laughs> literally. <laughs> hey, fucking men. Yeah, always great chatting with you, Marie. I appreciate you hopping in. First caller on the on the call-in show. Mm -hmm. Call in. Um, I'll see you all later. <laughs> i'll see you all later all right talk That's to you awesome. soon Marie. appreciate it i, Whew, I we're off to a good start man this is oh, yeah. great and I of feel course like we'll in... see marie on patreon later on uh marie has been a supporter on patreon forever and we really appreciate it man because it keeps us going as we saw yesterday from the fundraiser i mean the community is strong i mean when we fucking focus our intention on something shit happens and so it's just a matter of of continuing to do that and that's the point it's your attention it's your attention you know it's uh what's that 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 uh where your attention goes things grow or something along those lines where just your like, attention goes energy flows something like that yeah and it's like yeah just energy in energy out you know the more you put in the more comes out eventually it just may not be in the way that you're expecting in which case why are you expecting it uh we have another person in the in the queue so i'm excited we're off to a good start with this call and show remember if you'd like to jump in the queue you can do so at dualisticunity.com slash live we yes. are joined by becca and this may not be but i believe it may be the same becca that we we met previously on one of our groups hell yes i feel like i'm in fight club in a lot of ways after chatting with marie yeah. everyone's Aaron. Comes in, chats for a bit, and then like they're all walks of life. Chats yeah. for a bit, and then like they're all walks of life. Oh, hold on, I got, I got oh, a second. I can hear myself. Sorry, sorry. I don't like that. That. I can hear myself. And isn't that the worst listening to ourselves? <laughs> oh, now I'm um, kerfuffled. Hold on. One Appreciate second. you joining us. Ah, it's like teeny tiny in my screen. And I'm <laughs> there we go. Hey. Okay. Take your time. Uh, What's up, Becca? <laughs> How's it going, guys? Good. I'm glad you could make it. Yeah, me too. I'm way too close. All right. Um, yeah, and of course. And, and I'm not surprised at all. But like what I wanted to talk about, Marie talked so much about like, um, and you guys brought it up too. Like you were said she was being honest with herself. Like we lie to ourselves so much. And like, that is such a root problem. Like, we're like, no, no, that didn't happen. Um, but when we lie to ourselves, then we have to try to get other people to believe the lie too. And that's where like the manipulation comes in. And like, we're like, no, no, no that, you know, try to tweak it. Like, no, don't, don't, didn't you see what like, you did and what happened? Like, you know, um, see it my way because that's the only like that's the most in-depth experience we have is our own experience so it's like way harder to see anyone else's to the degree that they see it obviously now it's much easier when you've had like an array of different experiences and you're like obviously then you can relate more that's why we call it that like we can put ourselves in those shoes more so it's, I don't know, it's a lot harder to like imagine what someone else's experience would be like. But I mean, the more you do it, the better you get at it as well. Um, so I don't know. You guys talked a lot about that, but, um, and <laughs> I was like, okay, so are we going back in time then? 
because something already happened. We're not going forward in time. Like we drew a picture, like an experience was had. Are we going backwards? Like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so that's a great question. Uh, I guess if we're trying to hold on to something, we're always kind of stuck in the past in a lot of ways. And then we're always kind of lying to ourselves too. I mean, we're constantly lying to ourselves, trying to be sure of something and lying as we go and assuming that we can be, can be sure of something about ourselves. But yeah, going back and fucking <laughs> holding on to those pictures and everything that we've done thinking that that meant something previously and it's like we build this sort of accumulation of things that have happened that meant something and then it's like <clears throat> all assumptions and then like we keep lying to ourselves assuming that that was the case and it's both where we hold on to our feeling of higher and lower value like we have to delve into that in order to feel better or feel worse about ourselves, but then as as you have to let go of both to let go of of either and we keep trying to let go of just the things that make us feel worse <laughs> hold on to the ones that make us feel better not realizing that it's the same goddamn thing it's still holding on to those perspectives to that to perspective itself being truth and if it isn't then you don't get either you don't get anything that builds you up, but also, you know, things aren't tearing you down constantly as well. But yeah, you want to go, let go both, which, you know, makes a lot of sense when you, when you say it, but yeah. It's really tricky, right? Because it's kind of like, um, you all remember being told about a white lie when you were growing up and all of a sudden it's like, you know, what's the lying not always bad no well it's a white lie you know it's better than better than hurting her feelings it's like oh that's really fucking telling isn't it and that's exactly it, is that we're always we're always telling ourselves a story and it either tears us down or builds us up because we think we can be torn down or built up and so as soon as we're telling ourselves anything we are lying to ourselves there's a difference in the recognition recognition's a bit different when all of a sudden you have a moment where you're like God damn, I've actually gotten really good at doing that. You know, that's different. But to hold on to that, I am really good at doing that. Doesn't mean that's going to tear you down because at some point, maybe you'll fuck up. Now you're afraid of fucking up because that invalidates the idea. All that shit. So as soon as it's an idea, it's a lie. You know, as soon as it's something that's stagnant in a concept, it's of the past. You know, as you said, it does not exist here in the present because none of our concepts are to the truth. None of our ideas of ourselves is what we are what we are. So it's so it's interesting because knowing that, then you start to recognize that the only truth is what remains, right? And what remains is what you are, what we all are. That's why I love the the recognition that division is only conceptual. You know, until I start to think of division, it doesn't exist. Which means that we're all the same thing. We are all what is in movement. You know, and anything we try to think about that takes away from what it actually is. It's all just a lie to make us feel better. That's why I recoil at the idea of source consciousness. <laughs> as soon as people are like, oh, we're all a part of... Ah, ah, stop that. You know, and the only reason is because it's a beautiful lie. It's a beautiful lie that makes us feel very good. But disempowers us, ultimately. Because you are source consciousness. There is no division. The lie that you tell yourself is the reason you can't admit it's you. Absolutely. Um, that like led me to think, like, do you think that's kind of along the um, lines of the story of Adam and Eve? Like that, that is the lie that like the, the, the serpent and God are separate. That's the dualism. Like, instead of it just being everything, <laughs> like, nope, nope. There's, there's two different things. That's the knowledge. Of good and evil right yeah that's that was it it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil not knowledge knowledge of good and evil so now you see a split i love the fact that directly after eating the apple it's the first time they experience shame mm -hmm. 
all of a sudden it's that there's a division there's something to be ashamed of and from right yeah and it's but it's so crazy like because we don't let our kids do that well typically generations didn't let our kids um i mean we most of them lied to them like and so they learned to lie to themselves and um I, that's actually one of the most and and I, of course like i pride myself on it but you know um it's, I, I think, like you said, it's a recognition. Like I, I don't lie to my kids and I tell them that like, and I'm like, listen, I don't lie to you. So like, I don't, I wouldn't like that in return, please. Like, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't need, need to lie to you. I'm always honest with you. Um, and I guess not, I pride myself in it, but like, I'm, I think I'm going to hold myself, you know, like I hold myself accountable to that. Um, but like you said, that's what remains. Like I, um, 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 yeah, <laughs> has to do with motherhood, but uh, yeah. go ahead and that, it might come back to me. I was just gonna say, you know, all you can ever do to help anyone is is do it yourself. Is like be the example, not of anything, not of a right way, but just to be in yourself and that's it like not even and and genuinely being yourself and and there's a beauty in that because if you're not trying to hold yourself up to some standard and you are willing to just be yourself then anyone who sees you isn't trying to be you so much the more you're genuinely yourself because that's important because I don't want anyone being me. I want them being them. <laughs> Whatever that means for them. So, and that's beautiful because then I don't have any fucking standard for myself. And I can actually just be myself. And that feels kind of nice. <laughs> A little freer. Um. Yeah, I... I like had a health coaching or I wanted to have a health coaching like business thing. And <clears throat> like, I, I'm not going to tell the whole like story, but um, that was actually one of my like biggest things. I was like, I like, I was having a hard time posting and like being consistent. And I was like, I, I do want to do it, but like, why am I not doing it? Like there's, there's something, there's a part of me that like is resistant. And <clears throat> it was that like, I didn't want people to be me. I just wanted them to like, be empowered and like learn through my experience too. You know what I mean? Like just, just give like tips and stuff, but I didn't want them to like do everything I was doing because it wasn't going to work like for them. Like it would had for me because it's my experience. Um, so I don't know. I, I know that like I, sh that was, but it's, it's also helping me like shift and evolve because I don't need to be like one specific, I don't know, thing and be a health coach. Like, I don't know. I was trying to be that identity, but yeah, my time is up. So I want to like make anybody. <laughs> well, we really appreciate you being here, Becca. It's always nice to see you. you've got some fans in the comment section, Becca. So it's always <laughs> nice. Um, and of, of course, we'll see you on the Patreon group after. But it's that that reminder of it's what remains. It's not through trying to be somebody; it's through being yourself. And in being yourself, you can actually recognize why you do what you do. But as long as you're trying to be something, then there's no rhyme or reason other than this, this feeling like you should be. Like it's an obligation. It's the right thing to do. And there's no sensitivity in that whatsoever. So I really appreciate you dropping by and sharing your insights. As a parent, I definitely relate when it comes to, to your kids. And you're like, you know, it's like, I, I, don't, I don't lie to you. So don't lie to me. And then your kids are like, but it's easy. <laughs> I remember that part. Yep, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for having me. Good. Yeah, mm -hmm. Becca, always a blast chatting with you. And uh, yeah, hope to see you on Patreon later. This is a lot of fun. I love our college shows. They're so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. They're a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, man. It's so I'm, funny because everything's half-assed backwards. Like always, it's that whole thing. It's like, you know, I want to be a good person. So don't do that. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> it's like, just be you.
You know, and the more you're you, the more you start to recognize the value of being you, which is mean, which means that everybody you meet, you're going to recognize the value to them of being them, which is what you're going to try and encourage, because it's exactly what you want to encourage in yourself. Because everything, everything you do is a reflection of how you treat yourself. Everything. Keep that in mind the next time you're screaming at someone. Yeah. Mm hmm. And uh, on that note, we have another caller. Amanda, what is up? I do have host capabilities, so I'm able to let her in here. That's right. That's right. Hostile takeover yeah. of the host capabilities. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. The power. But yeah, that need that need to be light. <laughs> I just I mean, was like, shit. What's up? I, I didn't know if there was anybody in the queue or anything. So I was like, I gotta, I learned, I've learned, I remembered my lesson. I have to turn off all the other devices that are playing this episode. So that way it doesn't glitch while I'm on the episode. <laughs> oh my God, I was getting water. I'm telling you guys, I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm surprised you're up and about after yesterday's fucking long ass marathon. By the way, shout out to Amanda helping us co-host that marathon episode yesterday. That was an unexpected surprise. Also, shout out to the mug, which is a benefit of being on Patreon in tier three. You get that mug. That mug right there says, my life is an epic story unfolding before me. It was one of the original graphics that we made for our, our tier three Patreon members. I love that mug. So definitely, if you uh, if you want the mug, jump on Patreon. That's right. I do. I do love it. And I I I somehow don't know how I picked this mug out of all my mugs, <laughs> you know, but here we are. <laughs> but um, the modeling for sure. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, you know, you you can take the girl out of sales, but you can't take the sales out of the girl. <laughs> to some degree, I do feel that way about my time working in sales and marketing. It's like it's I'm always I can always spin a story and I can always sell something. And honestly, that has been a great skill when I'm when I'm inadvertently selling myself a story of what I should be. And then I'm like, oh, well, we can spin this. Oh, we can flip and dip this and we can take this in any direction. And so it doesn't feel like I'm so stuck because I'm so used to like flipping stories and shredding them and starting over and bringing something to the boss. And he's like, I hate it. I'm like, all right, back to the drawing board, guys. <laughs> you know, and so there was like, a, it was like developing this uh, skill of not being so attached. You know, when I was in an art class, my, I remember teachers that are like, okay, we're going to paint something and heads up at the end of the class, you're going to destroy it. You're going to like cover it with white paint because uh, at least my art teachers of the time were trying to make sure that even if we love something that we created, we didn't develop an attachment to it, that we could live without it because we were more enjoying the process of creating than becoming obsessed with what we created. So I'm so glad that like so many of the, so like, the art classes and the lessons from school and time in sales it's like if you if if you're successful in sales it's usually because you've gotten used to the word no and you don't take it personally as as much as you could and uh and and you know that usually people don't make a sale until it's like their eighth or ninth attempt and just learning that when i was learning about sales i was like oh so it's not like a one and done it's not oh i said the perfect thing to the customer and that was it it was a home run with one sentence or one one presenting it was like it was multiple attempts and and so I kind of treat life as a whole like that like something doesn't have to go exactly the way that I think is a best case scenario the first time I attempt it and in fact I it could be 15 times in a row but during that whole process I am learning about the environments I'm learning about who's in that environment with me I'm learning about what are they prioritizing I'm learning about how what they're prioritizing can either work with or work against what I'm prioritizing and just not being so attached to making changes and so I'm I'm so glad that I've I've developed that that skill set because it doesn't feel like anything that I've done can't be replicated anything that I've done can't be done more efficiently um or anything that I can't that anything that I do is like unique to me it feels like everything that I've experienced has been a lot of throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks and not not taking it personally when something doesn't stick and so it just feels like that's you know just the ability to pivot like something happens you hit a wall 
boom, you blow that wall up and now it becomes demolition. You build a fucking bridge out of the, out of the pieces. You know, you see a hole, you fucking jump over it. You, you, you want to dance, you put on a song. It's not the song you want. You learn some new steps. It's like, it's like, regardless to what you thought, you can always pivot. You can always change directions. It's just how, how much are you holding on to a particular direction? You know, and so what I've learned the most is just that even if I think I want a certain direction, doesn't necessarily mean that it would do what I think it'll do. So it's just a matter of like shooting my shot, but like not giving a fuck if I miss, like just being happy that I shot the shot because I felt like it and it was a genuine shot. No swish, but damn, it felt good. <laughs> you know, It's not satisfying in the way that I was uh, striving for it to be satisfying, which is like getting what I want and being in control. And even when that did kind of happen, it just felt hollow. Yeah, well, it's funny, you know, because we we watch movies, for example, and, and in movies, you always have you know, those those cherry picked moments, like the big game, the final shot of the basketball, you know, they, or, yeah. or the meeting where you fucking you fucking nail that presentation, you know, shit like that. And and so we start to think that our life is actually an accumulation of those fucking pinnacle moments instead of mm -hmm. our life being actually the, the entire fucking thing. Yeah. It's, the, it's the entire fucking thing. It's not like you're satisfied. It's you're being fulfilled. Like your life is continuing to fill you as you continue through it. If you look at it that way, but we don't because we're so busy looking at what we don't have and therefore feeling what we lack instead of feeling how much we've already been filled and are continuing to be filled. Isn't it so funny? We're like, I want, I want, I want all this. It's like, and I can't feel anything that I've learned up until now. It's like, cause you're not looking at it. You're so busy trying to get somewhere. You're happy that you're missing how much you've already become that you'd be very happy with. If you just slow down and look at it. Straight up. And then you start to get an appreciation for how many reps you've had not even doing something specific, but just fucking living life. Like there's reps to that, to waking up in the morning and getting through a day. Like that's a rep of doing stuff right there in and of itself. It doesn't even have to be in a direction. It's just functioning and taking in your environment. Like you've gotten a lot of reps in there and just living and experiencing things. And you've also gotten a lot of reps potentially in ways that maybe don't have quite the return that you were hoping for. If you haven't maybe gotten a lot of reps in doing things and not thinking that they meant something about you, you've gotten a lot of reps in doing things and thinking they meant something about you. And where did they get you? <laughs> they got you in this fucking pretzel of fear and worry and concern and self-judgment and self-criticism and blah, 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 and all this crazy stuff. But you can start getting reps without doing that so much and actually taking shots at things you know actually trying things and genuinely giving them your best effort and knowing that they don't mean anything about you and then you know you start to build not this idea of yourself but what you actually are and not build but just just start to see and start to experience because it's not something that's built. It's it's you're already, you're you're it right now. It's just you maybe haven't gotten a whole lot of reps in it in being that yourself. Or you weren't counting the reps, right? Fucking uh, who is it? Arnold was like, I don't even count my reps until it hurts. You know, maybe we do that to the same degree for us. Like you go through these experiences and you're like, no, that was nothing. That wasn't a rep. You're like, yo, that was a whole year of your life, motherfucker. That was a rep. That was a day. That was a moment. That was an experience. You lived through it. That was a rep, you know, like, and, but I feel like we're like honored. It's like, if it doesn't hurt, it doesn't count. It's like, oh, I think they all count, you know? <laughs> and I love how I inserted an Arnold impression. Like, like oh my goodness. Just everything counts you know except when we say it doesn't you know and and we do that so often and then we realize or it seems like a, a shock later like oh wow i can't believe that i'm here it's like i don't know look at the million fucking steps behind you that might give you a hint that you you've come some way you you you've grown even when you think you weren't growing um but it's but it's just uh 
it's just easy to just get caught up in any in any story or in any perspective because you're so zoomed in. Like I that's what I mean, like I do that still. And so that's why I love reminding myself and other people, like, no, it's not that I've gotten to a point or there is a point where you're just like, I've got this shit under control. If somebody asks me right now, like, how am I doing with, with my life? I'm just gonna be like, I'm not entirely too sure, but I think sometimes we have fun, you know? <laughs> And that feels like the most honest answer I could give to a question if somebody was like, Amanda, how's life going? You know, I'm not entirely too sure, but sometimes we laugh. You know, sometimes we have a good time. I don't know exactly where, what I'm doing, what, you know, I can't give you a summary, but I can say we're here right now and, and I'm not upset about that. <laughs> It's like, I'm still waiting for the universe to give me a status update. Aside from that, I'm okay. Yeah, where's my fucking report card from the universe? How am I doing right now? <laughs> it's like, I have no fucking idea, but I'm here. But I'm here. And I can at least chuckle at that, at how little fucking idea I have what the fuck is going on right now. And like, how how weirdly okay I am with that never thought I would have no fucking idea what's going on. Be like, yeah, it's cool. No, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's actually kind of nice not having to keep everything that's going on in mind. Like, oh, you can just get informed. Uh, there's actually processes happening that aren't top of mind all the time. And there's kind of this fucking natural informational process to just be in yourself that uh that starts to play out that you not get used to but get a little more familiar with i guess that's right developing that sensitivity you know it's just a just skill sets right you know what you what you do more often you get better at right and that's just that's just inevitable so you know, sometimes you don't even realize what you what you're copying and pasting so quickly that it just seems like that was supposed to be that way. But it's just I work fast, man. <laughs> so, you know, I don't even notice how good I am at tearing myself down. I was like, damn, that was good. Good uppercut. But next time, maybe words, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> this is me talking about, you know, slam dunking myself and I'm, just because I I it it just happened so quickly right because I'm not paying attention to that particular thing happening right because there's so many things that are happening and it's impossible for me to create the expectation that I should be paying attention to everything that I'm doing all the time and everything that everyone else is doing and everything that's happening like it's just impossible so it's like I'm gonna my attention's gonna it's a spotlight on a stage it's gonna fall on something and I can move it. And if it stays on the same spot, that's okay. But as soon as I notice that, I can just move it. And instead of being upset that I don't have the spotlight on the whole fucking stage, well, I'm sorry, the light's not that bright. It's just not. And so it's just a matter of paying attention to where I'm at. And that's all I really need to pay attention to. Because if it's not happening in this moment, I it's not, a, it's not available to me to deal with it, to, to engage it. So it's like worry. I love the quote that was like worry is a down payment on a problem you don't have because you usually don't worry about something that's like happening right now you usually worry about something that's going to happen because like you know and even if I am like worried right now it's usually about not it's usually about something that's not happening right right now because like if there's a fire you're not worried about the fire that you're in you run the fuck out but you worry about the fire that's coming and that's that's usually where I was like fuck man if it's not here I can't deal with it fuck that what can I, what can I deal with? What I can deal with is what's available. What's available is in this moment. That's all I really need to pay attention to because anything else is just not worth my attention because it's not here. So I guess that's just kind of the way that I like snap myself out of it where I'm just like, oh shit, we just got caught up in a mental fucking tornado. Oh shit. What am I doing? Fuck, man, I'm home. Why are we worried about work at home? Why are we worried about like, it's just like, I, as soon as I catch it, I'm like, shit that's not here okay what is here me maybe some tunes maybe a walk around the block maybe a, a a fucking bubble bath maybe making myself a tea like what is here deserves my attention just as much as my worries but I tend to give my attention to my worries and I can't even do anything about them because they're not here yet 
like the problem that I'm worried about is not here yet. So it just doesn't, it's just not worth it. And that's what it is. What, what's worth it to you and where you spend your attention is, is where you're telling yourself it's worth, it's worth spending that attention. And if you think that I'm full of shit, like watch enough time go by and you're going to be like, no, I, I can really see where, what do I think is valuable? What am I prioritizing? It's really hard to hide what I think is valuable because it's show my priorities show me that. And if I want to disagree, then I'm just going to be running in circles. And that's my priority is to run in circles. So it's like, if I really want to be honest with myself, all I have to do is look at my life. How am I spending my time that I can't spend twice? And how I spend my time lets me know what I think is the most important. Because I, would, I don't spend my time on things that I don't think are important. So even if I say it's not important, if I spent my time on it, I know I'm full of shit. And I know that it's important because I spent time and attention on it and energy. And so that's how I know what what's important to Amanda. What, what the fuck has she been up to for the last five hours? That's what's important. Well fucking said. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. It's uh it's exactly that how you spend your time is entirely indicative and reflective of what you find important. And uh that's gonna have impact over your experience as you go. Whatever you're focused on, whatever you're prioritizing, however you're spending your time is then gonna have impact on every moment that you that you spend that time where that focus is going to be in that spotlight on the stage you know it's not covering the whole stage it's either here or it's somewhere else but if it's somewhere else it's not here and you can't maintain all those other things going on and keep your attention on what's actually what's actually going on doesn't work like that now I find it incredibly interesting that you know, at one point my life was just a wash of of stupid shit, you know, like drama, friends, toxic toxicity, fucking people being assholes. You know the kind of friends who are like, oh, that's just what he's like. You know that kind of thing. Just just bunches of that, and, and and now there's like none of that. There's none of that whatsoever. Everybody I know in my life is somebody genuinely that I just find interesting you know as a whole um and it's just because i appreciate the silence see i appreciate the silence and so there's more silence you know there's less bullshit because I, there's less bullshit in me you know, but as long as i'm willing to participate in my own bullshit i'm willing to validate everyone else's all right it's just like judgment right as long as i'm holding on to it i'm gonna fucking tell you you should hold on to it <laughs> right so if i if i still believe in judging i'm gonna tell you you should be judging right and that's what you're facing in a lot of these conversations when you talk to somebody you're like you know you don't have to be judging they're like but you do you know it's like you don't have to be beating yourself with a stick but you do it's like okay but aside from the fact that you're doing that is there any other any other reason that you have for saying that you do like just take like if you weren't doing it do you think you'd still have to <laughs> you know it's just that you're validating what you're already doing so very often and so it's important to recognize that that you can try to change or you can just be changed and in being changed everything changes with you but in trying to be changed you just continue to stay where you are which is in that state of control in that state of lack in that state of toxicity and conflict that's the problem with trying to change is that you're always trying to hold on to the past, the change that you like and would prefer. Mm. <laughs> I want change, but really I just want more of my preferences. Where can I order that? Can I double the order? <laughs> oh yeah, fucking <laughs> well said. Yeah, trying to control the change instead of just being it it's, you don't get both <laughs> but i don't know what that means control. see that's the problem it's like you could just be the change you're like yeah what does that do it's like you don't get to know that the only way you get to know that is to keep going but you want to know that before the change happens okay so if change happens what does that mean about me what does that do for me what does this change entail per se is like which part of it because you're kind of involved 
through each and every step of the way. So you're like, okay, so if this change happens, what's then? Well, go through it and then you get to decide. That's pretty much it. The only way you get to decide what happens next is to go through the first bit of it, right? <laughs> That's pretty much it. But we really want to just like, we want a map. We want a map. If I go from here and I go that way, is that going to work out? It's like, what time of day? <laughs> Like, what are you bringing with you? I don't know. You know, and that's the whole thing we want to know, but the only way to know is to go do it. Right? The only way to know how things are going to change is to go and change. <laughs> right? And we don't know, but we keep wanting to choose the right change. We want to choose the right job. We want to choose the right husband. We want to choose the right partner, the right path, the right belief, the right religion, the right school, the right job. We want to choose the right thing. And we don't want to accept that throughout all of that rightness, you can fuck it all up because you're there for the whole ride. So it's not about the right school, the right job, the right car, the right relationship. It's about you paying attention to where you are. Because then you can take anything you do and make the most of it. And that makes it the right thing, right? But if you choose the right thing and you don't make the most of it, that's not the right thing. So there is no right thing. It really just comes down to you being where you are. But that's uncomfortable. And so we want to know that there's a route, there's a path, there's a goal, there's a destination. If I keep going this way, I'm going to get there. Like, well, life doesn't happen that way. Like there's twists and turns. Like you could be going in a certain direction and all of a sudden everything falls out from underneath you and you realize that the direction you were going in was the result of your egotism. You know, that's a good direction to give up. You know, but you'll never give it up if you don't actually allow yourself the clarity to see it, which means allowing yourself the chance to question it. But you're so committed to getting there. You don't want to question it. That would ruin the fucking journey. If I question it, I might not go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's like that, that's a good point. Maybe you should look at that. Oh, man. I When you were talking, Ray, it made me think of um, weather. So I didn't know this about weather that to accurately predict weather in one city, you have to know weather for the whole world. <laughs> like you have to know all of the weather because you have to know how each section of the globe impacts the other because it's all connected. So predicting the weather for one place, you kind of have to predict the weather for the whole fucking planet. And so it, it almost feels like when we're looking for that kind of predictions in our life, you'd have to know what every person, everything, every creature, every plant was going to do and how they're impacted by the choices that you're making and then how that ripples back to you in order for you to know if something was quote unquote the best for you. In order to predict your weather, you'd have to predict the weather for every fucking other living and non-living thing. You'd have to know everything to know exactly how you will, like what your path is gonna look like. And that's just fucking absurd. Like, if that's the deal, I don't want it. it. Like, in order for me to predict what would happen to quote unquote Amanda, I'd have to know everything that's going to happen to everyone ever. Fuck that. That takes away all the magic. That takes away all of the surprise. There's no point. There's nothing that you're learning because you know everything. There's nothing that you're surprised by because you know everything. There's nothing that delights you. There's nothing that, you know, so in one breath, there's nothing that you would fear because you would know everything, but you would have no joy because you'd be a, you wouldn't be able to invest in anything because nothing would surprise you. It would just be going through the motions, but they'd be safe motions. They'd be motions that you knew about, but that would be your life, would be literally just going through the predicted motions and nothing else. Fuck that. I. It just doesn't seem worthwhile to the to the experiencer. I like hear it you. Just, it, it, it wouldn't. Absolutely. But we, what we do instead is we find a nice middle ground. Instead of me knowing everything that's going to be happening, so that way I'll be safe, I trust in God. God knows everything. He's taking care of it. He's taking care of it. I'm still safe. Um, that said, Amanda, we're going to have to let you go as we have somebody else in the queue. And we are coming to the end of our call-in show, but we will see you on Patreon in about a half hour. Thank you again for being here, shooting the shit with us and sharing your insight with the audience. We really appreciate it. Of course. I love shooting the shit with you guys. And I'm glad that someone else is in the in the waiting room. I'm excited to hear them. And I will see you guys later. Great to chat. As always, Amanda. Talk to you soon. Ooh, good calling show so far. So yeah. at the risk of being confusing, Andrew, we're gonna let Andrew into the into the room. <laughs>
<laughs> Glad that he could make it. Uh, this has been a dope call-in show. Thank you, everyone, for being here and participating. We really appreciate it. After this, we're going to be on Patreon. You can join. We have a seven-day free trial for a Tier 2 membership. Today is a Tier 2 call, so it goes for an hour and a half. Starts at 8 p.m. Eastern time. It's our late night. Fuck yes. Andrew, what is up, man? How's it going? Hey, everyone. I just wanted to jump in here. Sorry, I got to shut this door. The whole world around me is is making noise, but uh, I had to get in on here. I keep messing up when uh, when to join these things because of the time change and the time zones. And I wish we could all be on the same time. You know that would that would be great. But uh, but yeah, no, I'm just happy to be here right now. So yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could have watched more of the stream today. I was out just exploring the world and just. Loving life, but uh, I'm excited to be here. Be here this evening. But uh, what what are you guys' topics? You guys are talking about right now? Anything and everything, or as always on your forum, you mentioned that you wanted to talk about life and duality, and that has been very much the uh, the overall o- overarching conversation of today. Just the fact that you know life is dual, and if we aren't paying attention, then we tend to push it in one direction and one direction only, and we wonder why shit gets all unbalanced. Oh, my cat's got a little, uh, little to say about that. Sorry, he's screaming at me. He loves dualistic unity. So when he hears you guys' voice, he just gets excited, you know, because he feels when I, I get a little excited too, because I love the discussion. But yeah, no, I start my job next Monday. So this week has been kind of like a recap or refresh, you know, get ready. And this morning I had, I woke up and I had the analogy in my head that I'm just like a new egg. Like I'm just in an egg and I'm breaking out of the shell and there's not, not everything that happened in the past is in the past. And I don't know, I I'm really nervous for next week, but I'm excited. And I, I'm, I'm just using those nerves to just like drive myself. And yeah, I don't know. Everything you guys have said is just pushed me to try new things. And it's just like, it's mind blowing how it's affecting my family, my friends, myself the most but it's like i'm not even preaching anything but they'd notice you know what i mean and that's the biggest thing is i don't let things stop me anymore i just go and i just do shit and it's crazy how much the world gives back to me and when i'm patient too right you just have to wait for your time and you know my business is going well and just everything everything about my life like i thought i was in the lowest of low like last week and now I'm like, I'm on my fucking highest horse right now. I'm I'm riding the Clydesdale right now into the Queen's Castle. Like that's how I feel about life. I'm like I, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so stoked to be a part of this community. And I couldn't have got through it without you know just uh, some people to talk about it with. Because everybody else in my life just kind of is like, yo, you are crazy, man. Like, <laughs> so I just wanted to jump in and say a little bit about that. We appreciate the update, man. It's really nice to hear how things are going. I am going to disagree with you, though, as somebody who went for fucking half my life with no one to talk to. You'd you'd still do it. You'd still do it. It just wouldn't be as pleasant. (laughs) Um, So I'm glad that you could be here, man. You know, regarding the uh, the feeling of anxiety, I, I always wonder about that now because it always comes before something that that is going to change our life. And if you don't label it anxiety, you're like, well, it kind of feels like excitement too. But if you think about that, that's just the response to the feeling, right? What it actually feels like, I think, is change. I think we're feeling change. And I think that's yeah. why we have a response to it. Is like all of a sudden we know our life's going to shift and we can feel that energy building as we get yeah. closer to it. And we're like, I need to respond to this. I need to respond. <laughs> Should I be excited? Should I be scared? It's like, just keep going. Exactly. And and I feel like having the week before I start too, I'm like feeling everything so much more. And like you're saying, just relaxing into the unknown and relaxing into it all is it, I'm enjoying every part of it. Like before I used to be so anxious about not working. And now I'm just like, just really enjoying the fact that, you know, I'm starting work next week. You know, it'll be the nine to five sort of full time shit, but it's, I just got to enjoy right now. And I don't know. It's it's crazy. You can pull yourself out of the lowest of lows. Like like you said, like I didn't have anybody 
in those times, like even when I got off a call and I was feeling really like, oh, how am I high horse? Like I'm still alone at the end of the day, right? Like these calls, as much as I get out of them, they're not like what you do with it in the real world is what you do with it, right? So it's like you said, it's like I can hold on to oh, all this mindfulness that makes me feel good, but it's if I don't actually practice it, like, and just with anxiety and stuff too, like I've been on anxiety medication for like two years. Okay. Cause I was, and I'm still on them. And I really agree with you guys about what you say about, you know, that you don't need medication for this stuff, but I'm also like, you know, my biology is, I just like freak out all of them. You know what I mean? Like I just, my, my shit is just on edge sometimes sort of thing. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just trying to like really find myself and be able to find peace in myself. And then maybe I won't even need that stuff in the future sort of thing. You know, like, I don't know. It's so confusing. Up. It's like, like anything the, else, right? Like I used to smoke yeah. cigarettes all the time to deal with the same shit. You know, it just yeah. gave me a break. But after a while, and this is where self-honesty comes in, where you actually start to realize like, I haven't actually reacted to anything in like a while. You know, do, exactly. is the problem even still there? You know, and, and that's the thing is you start to think it is just because you've identified it with it for so long. Yeah. And my whole life I've been told, you know, I, you're not a good student. You're not this. You're not that. I was sent to a private school for people with special needs on the other side of the city. I had a two and a half hour bus ride from grade seven to grade 11. And I was both ways. So every day I was sitting on this bus thinking about why am I getting sent to the other side of the city? Because I have a problem. And I've realized this is a trauma I have in my back of my head all the time. Even when I went to college and I was away from that, I was like, I'm not good at this. And like, now that I'm 28, I'll be 28 in April, 27, but I'm going to, I'm looking at going back to school and I'm like, I don't have to think that I'm a shitty student. You know what I mean? Like, just because every teacher told me I was a class clown, I didn't give a fuck. Doesn't mean I'm not smart in other ways. And like, I don't know. It's it's been something like I've been kind of trying to uncover, but also I'm like, man, that's a deep hole to <laughs> to open. You know what I mean? <laughs> One layer at a time. But yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just when people tell you your whole life you can't do certain things, it's it's super hard to just forget that. You know what I mean? Like, but it's just my idea of myself based on others' opinions that are everything to me i guess but that's my problem i guess you know what i mean like i sure i want them to look at me in a certain way but at the end of the day it doesn't matter so that's where i just love dualistic unity for shit like that because it's like sure it feels good but it doesn't fucking matter <laughs> we're all gonna die anyways so do what you want to <laughs> exactly i love man. andrew's face just like light up like he's just fucking mind blown I, i'm like okay that, then i might have said something good there so. <laughs> oh you, you're speaking to my fucking soul man and when you, <laughs> with the stories we tell ourselves i wondered how much we almost we almost like reinforce them just to feel like we can maintain some sense of of certainty or control because i got stories and whatnot that have been told myself for a while despite things in reality not really not really validating them so much part of me like almost wants to hold on to it just to feel like i know something and and those feelings of anxiety even or the overwhelming sort of feelings if they are just indicative of change and there's something to to look at something to to follow almost something to dig into instead of you know fucking running from them like i have for so much of my life if they are indicative it's like those like the quote you know what you resist persists i think you guys said that before and it's like all my life i've kind of been scared of school scared of challenge and it's like all that shit just comes back and bites me in the ass. So it's like, why don't I just go into that full force? And if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. And like, I'm trying to convince people I have a certain value in this, but it's not like, oh, I can get a good grade on this test. Like, I don't know. It's There's a lot of factors in it all, but I, 
I hope I can make myself proud. That's all that really matters, I guess, you know? Yeah. A lot of what I went to school for was because I thought, oh, my parents would be proud. You know, I might do something good with that. But it's like, man, none of that really matters. Just try shit, I guess. So I'll wrap it up there. But I appreciate you guys letting me jump on today. I hope I, I'm, I'm so happy I didn't miss it. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm very glad you hopped on here, too. Andrew, this has been this has been a fucking epic calling show. And we didn't even have to use the Q and A. Absolutely. No, we really appreciate it, Andrew. And we'll see you on Patreon, man. Oh yeah, for sure. I'll be here. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so you much. You take care. What a great call in show. This has been amazing. But I want to bring that up, actually. It, it's so funny because we have ideas of ourselves and it's so so often based on things that we've went through previously. And we tend to disregard or or rather, I guess over time we've learned to not look at all of the influences. And so what I mean is that, and this is a pretty common thing, um, going through high school, for example, maybe you weren't very good at math. And so you started identifying as being not very good at math. And then you went in a direction with a career that maybe had nothing to do with math, right? Or anything to do with advanced math. And then you went through the rest of your life and you still identify as somebody who's not very good at math. When was the last time you actually sat down and tried to learn math? When was the last time you actually sat down and tried to relearn something that was taught to you in grade 10? Because I sure as shit guarantee you right now, based on how much you've learned to not identify with your failures and successes and all that, you got a fuck ton more clarity now than you did back then. And that you would do just fine if you were to pick up and try and do, and try and do that math. It's not to say you're going to become a mathematician. I mean, you don't have to like absorb yourself in it. I'm just saying, challenge yourself. Try it. Try something that you don't remember very well. Just go and look up the lessons. Go through it, and like Khan Academy or something like that. You'll pick it up. You'll pick it up because you were never really good. At, you were never really bad at the thing. You were in an environment where you had a fuck ton of stress and you were trying to be perfect in everything. And so you judged yourself for everything that didn't meet that mark. And then you went through the rest of your life with all of these weights around you just because they're not perfect. Therefore, you're not good at it. But it was the environment, the stress, the pressure of trying to be something, of trying to fit in, of trying to compare yourself to everyone else and plan for some fictitious goddamn future where if you don't make the right choices right now, you're going to be fucked. And with all of that, we judge ourselves for not being good at fractions. You know, and it's just because we we have learned to forget the reason we weren't good at fractions because everybody around us is like, oh, that's just school, that's just life. You just got to deal with stuff. Feel sorry for your children. You know, and that that's exactly it. And it's because they don't want to deal with the fact that they are traumatized as fuck too. You know, and we don't we don't recognize how much went in the way. And so I encourage you, listener, if you have a memory like Andrew was just expressing from your childhood that makes you feel like you are still less. I encourage you to go and try something out from that childhood. Go try one of those challenges now. You'd be amazed how fast you pick, you fucking pick it up. Which will which will invalidate the memory and the idea of yourself. Don't worry, you'll form another idea of yourself and you can invalidate that later. Thus the fun. Oh man. And realizing like all these stories are just stories and and completely discounting the environment that you were in the state of mind you were in how you thought about yourself what you were trying to live up to what you're trying to get to like everything about how you lived and what you focused on and that you know the feeling like you're bad at math and then trying again that was that fucking comedy mic thing that i did this week for me like going through that experience was kind of trippy as fuck because i have memories from when I was younger, high school memories, college memories, where I was setting myself to a, you know, crazy bar at all times, no matter what. And I would get super nervous giving presentations, talking in front of people like every time. And, and I would get through it and like feel kind of OK after just because I got through. There would be like a settling of the buildup of the nerves and doing that the other day, like straight up was like situations that I had 
part of stories for me. I wasn't even sure I'd be able to make coherent noises in front of a group of people like that, that are all strangers that I don't know while I'm kind of baked. I didn't know if I was going to be able to hold the mic steady because like there were all these stories from like years ago and there have been situations, you know, since then that like those things didn't happen, but they still stuck because even in those situations, maybe I got a little bit better at something, but it was still on this sort of measurement. Like I went into it trying to do a good job and then measuring myself relative to it. So even as I did better, it's like those things were still there and doing that honestly, like totally invalidated a big component of stories that I've, I've told myself. So if that's the case, then that's exciting that it's something that you can look at and, and all those things that you're afraid of and just realize the environment that you were in, in the time at the time, and that you're in a different environment. You're different now. You see yourself differently. You don't judge yourself as much. Like there's been very little in the last two years that have stuck in my memory at all, despite having what feels like way more experiences than I did in the previous 10 years, way more variations in experience than I did in, in all of those years. And yet I have very, very few memories that stick in the sense of like, you know, traumatic sort of stuff, despite thing, all sorts of stuff happening, like they're not sticking anymore. And so if that's the case, then jumping into all those things that are parts of that story, all of a sudden the story, it's not that it goes away, but it just holds a lot less weight because all, all of a sudden there's more, more experiences in there, you know, more data in there instead of just like one point or two points of data that then, you know, cause you to never want to try anything again or go back to something. Oh, that's so interesting. It just dawned on me. Like, it, it's very much like, you know, we have uh, like we're water and over time we end up with these experiences that we consider to be dark experiences and it colors the water. And then we spend all of our time trying to get rid of the color of the water instead of just pouring in more water. We keep trying to get rid of the darkness instead of just filling it, like just giving it more context. Right. And that changes our relationship with it. Just thought that was a funny visual. Uh, we're going to wrap up here in about a minute and a half. I want to give a shout out to everyone again for being here today, for calling in. Thank you so very much. I do want to mention because we raised enough for a ticket yesterday for somebody to come to the mini retreat. I'm still waiting to hear back from that person, by the way. Uh, we are now working towards a second ticket. We've already blown over the first ticket by over $400. And so if you would like to help get us to a second ticket or even just a drastically reduced ticket for somebody who can't afford the full price, please go to dualisticunity.com slash donate. You can still give to the cause and it is still helping somebody get to the event if you can't, that's just fine. Feel free to share the link. It's very much appreciated. But one way or another, this has been a fucking magical week. Yesterday was intense. Today has just been carrying on that vibe. If anybody else out there is feeling this shit like I am, it's not anxiety. It's not excitement. But it certainly is change. Certainly is change. That is for sure. Which is exciting as fuck. You can feel it all around you. As you slow down, as you really slow down and just settle into where you're at and start paying attention to what the fuck's actually going on, <laughs> including in yourself, <laughs> including in yourself, especially in yourself. <laughs> All right. We're going to wrap up here, everyone. We'll see you in a few minutes. And uh, fuck, man. Great conversation. Glad we, we had this talk. It's been a blast. Bye, everyone.